Brown, in a moment, the wife of Malcolm X. Around 40 years ago, Malcolm X was gunned down in front of his pregnant wife and four daughters. While Malcolm was a nationally known, widely controversial spokesman for the Nation of Islam, his wife Betty remained a little-known mystery, even after her death. For many, she remains one. My guest tells the story of Mrs. Betty Shabazz. Russell Rickford is the author of Betty Shabazz. Mr. Rickford, welcome to the program. Thank you. This is a, a, a massive book, which uh, <laughs> uh, I have to uh, congratulate you. Uh, uh, just to write anything that large is, is an accomplishment. <laughs> if, you, if you're not saying anything, it's an accomplishment. <laughs> Uh, I, I'd, I'd like to know, um, what did you learn? What, uh, what, what, uh, what preconceived notions, and your, your background is you are a journalist, and mm -hmm. you were, at once, you wrote for the Philadelphia Inquirer, mm -hmm. did you not? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and a number of other publications. And I know all reporters, uh, based on their, just their professional duties, have opinions. Mm -hmm. But what, what, which of your opinions uh, were uh, reinforced mm -hmm. by your research, mm -hmm. and w what were your new insights? Well, you know, I think uh, I learned most about myself, in a way. Um, initially, I came to the project um, looking at Dr. Shabazz almost as an extension of Malcolm, and I was seeing the, the value of her story in terms of learning more about Malcolm's uh, personal life, his family life, uh, and then by extension, understanding more about his political message. So I was really seeing Dr. Shabazz almost as a, as a proxy, I think, uh, for Malcolm. And I knew next to nothing about Dr. Shabazz when I started doing in my preliminary research. Um, I had to realize, and it happened pretty early on in, in the research, um, that that was the wrong approach to take, that this sister's life um, was remarkable, and it was a story that was valuable in its own right. Um, and that her struggle, her evolution after uh, Malcolm's death um, was critical to understanding uh, not only the struggle in the 60s, but also the story of the aftermath of the struggle. What has happened to um, black America? What has happened to black families? What has happened to the, the black inner city? And in many ways, um, Dr. Shabazz's story um, reflects those developments. You know, I remember as you were talking, I was reminded of it. Uh, I think I've probably done as many or more uh, documentaries on Malcolm X than anybody on, in Amer in, on television in the world, certainly in America. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did a lot of programs in the 70s and 80s at the time when uh, the discussion of who killed him and what happened at the Audubon ballroom mm -hmm. at the at so forth, who plotted, who didn't plot and all that. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had one program and it was an aspect of it that uh, Betty Shabazz didn't like. And she and I always got along real well, mm -hmm. but Betty Shabazz would tell you what was on her mind. That's right. And she called me up and gave me a piece <laughs> of her mind. Uh, and I, <laughs> I, I remember uh, some years later, I, I read that she had confronted uh, 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 Minister Farrakhan in public uh, and gave him a piece of her mind. And right. when I read that, I grinned because I said, I know what it felt like. <laughs> and all you can do when Betty Shabazz got you straight was to say, yes, ma'am, I understand. <laughs> that, That's right. that was your best course of right. action. Right. So, if you, you know, uh, you go right ahead. Well, no, I think.